Good morning, I'm Reverend Tanya Pittman, and I would like to thank Reverend Dr. Walter Kimbrough and the Cliftondale United Methodist Church family for allowing me to share a message with you on this Pentecost Sunday. The message for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter two, verses one through four, and verses 16 through 21, which reads, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we, your humble servants, come before you today. Lord God, we've needed you in the days long past, and Lord God, we definitely need you now. Lord, with all of the chaos that's going on in this world, in our cities, within this nation, and even in our communities, Lord, we need you. So Lord God, please send your helper. Please send the Holy Spirit to um, and allow the Holy Spirit to just move about and touch the lives of your people, Lord God, empowering us and giving us peace, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask that you bless everyone who's in, under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you bless your peoples. Lord God, we ask that hope abound, that love abounds, that you bring peace and joy into our lives. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to teach us and show us the way. And Lord God, we just pray that we can follow Jesus to do as Jesus taught us to do, Lord God. We ask your blessings upon us on this day, on your people, Lord God. We ask your blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our topic for today is the good news. God is with us. Pentecost marks the beginning of the Christian church, the church's birthday. The Old Testament period of the law was concluded and a new era began. Those who believed in Jesus as Messiah became part of the body of Christ known as the church. Up until Pentecost, those who followed Jesus were Jews who believed in Jesus, along with some Gentiles. More importantly, Pentecost marks the fulfillment of prophecies from early prophets such as Joel and the more recent prophecies of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. The prophet Joel's uh, prophecy was that God said in the last days, the spirit of God will be poured out on all people and they will prophesy. John the Baptist prophesied in Matthew 3.11 that though he baptizes with water, one greater than he will come who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus, during his 40 days on earth after the resurrection, affirmed John the Baptist's prophecy that he would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. He explained to them that the gift from his father was upon God's own authority to choose the time and the place, and he instructed them to wait. Jesus promised that along with receiving the Holy Spirit, they would also receive power and they were to become his witnesses throughout the world. This year, 2020, has been an eye-scratching, hair-raising, mind-blowing, spiritual awakening kind of year, and we are only into the second quarter. Lives have been permanently changed, health challenged, grief-stricken, 
hearts broken, dreams shattered, financially devastating, feelings of isolation, the list goes on. That's the bad news. The good news is that people have learned to share again, care again, love their neighbors, offers words of encouragement and hope, live of little and learn to be content, bond with family, communicate with friends from a distance, experience new advances in technology they would never have considered before. Families are worshiping and studying God's word together in their homes, which some never did before. The church is growing stronger. Souls are being saved. Hearts are being strengthened, even though we are not in the sanctuary. We long to return to the temple of our familiar, even though we know there will never be a return to the so-called normal. Who wants to return to normal anyway, especially if normal looks like the devastating chaos we saw these past few weeks where black lives are devalued and white privilege reigns supreme. Out of this chaotic start in 2020, there must come some positive change and some outstanding growth in our, in our character and our circumstances. We have to harness this new power that we have attained and use it to ensure a better future for all. As we explore this phenomenon of Pentecost, ponder and meditate with me on these three points. Point number one, it's just an illusion. Point number two, the power and peace of the spirit. And point number three, spreading the good news. The second chapter of, of Acts finds Jesus' followers being obedient to his instructions. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus' 12 apostles and other followers were gathered together to celebrate the Jewish holiday, Shabbat, which recognized the early barley harvest and the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. Pentecost is seven weeks or 50 days from Easter. Likewise, Shabbat is the same amount of time from Passover, and people from all over the world would come to Jerusalem for the celebration. Remember, Jesus instructed his disciples that the time of the gift would come upon God's own choosing. Perhaps God chose to have his people gathered and focused on him so that when the spirit moved, it could touch many. To gain a better understanding, we have to move away from seeing Pentecost as a sign and understand it more as an illusion. An illusion is an expression designed to call something to mind without mentioning it explicitly. Pentecost, or Shabbat, was a regular Old Testament festival, much like Passover. You will recall that Jesus, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed on the same day that all Jewish people were sacrificing their lambs in memory of the first Passover. Thus, the festival of Passover is an allusion to the eventual crucifixion of Jesus. During the, Je the Jewish Shabbat, the Jews were to offer up grain offerings along with the regular burnt offerings. The grain was to be first fruits of new grain harvested from the land. This was an illusion of the coming of the Holy Spirit where Jesus's followers would receive the first fruits of the Spirit. Life now becomes a union between God and people. This union takes place through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God, which began on the Pentecost Sunday of Acts 2. We no longer have to go through, through priests to intercede with God on our behalf because the Holy Spirit is now our intercessor. This also characterizes the gospel of Jesus Christ as good news. The good news is not only about conquering death, but it is also about living life differently. These illusions inform us that God is always intricately connected to our life experiences from the beginning of time throughout our present circumstances and into the future. 
The suffering that the world is experiencing today with COVID-19, racism, and all of the other isms escalating reminds us of the mysteries of evil and death, even of Jesus' suffering on the cross and God's power to save. In the midst of all of the suffering, even hearing or being touched by the tragic and sometimes sudden death of those affected, we hear of miraculous recoveries. When we sing the song, The Lord is my light, we affirm Jesus as our Savior, and the words, In the time of trouble, he shall hide me, affirm our belief that Jesus will strengthen us and we have nothing to fear. So, we wait courageously on the Lord. It is just an illusion. It would do us well during these turbulent times to understand the illusion of Jesus' passionate ninth hour, his ninth hour on the cross. During Jesus' feelings of desolation and abandonment, when he cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He is actually praying Psalm 22. Pray this prayer daily as we continue to fight against COVID-19 and other atrocities. Psalm 22 is a plea for deliverance from suffering and hostility. This brings me to my second point. There is power and peace in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a new phenomenon that occurred on the day of Pentecost. Just as Jesus Christ and God are one, so is the Holy Spirit, hence the Holy Trinity. Genesis 1-2 introduces us to the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. We first encounter the Holy Spirit when we are convicted of our sin and are led to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. As we repent, confess our sins, and receive the gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit regenerates our inner human spirit, which now becomes sensitive to the spiritual things of God. When the Holy Spirit baptizes a believer, as in Acts 2, that is a secondary work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is available to all and empowers the believers to live a holy life. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, our helper, we become more like Jesus and are directed to do God's will. But this gift of the Spirit is not just for us. The gift is primarily for our empowerment to witness to others. First, let's take a look at the Holy Spirit as our helper. When you think of the Holy Spirit and remember the oneness of the Trinity, then you can know and be reassured that God is with us. When we sing, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own, we are reassured that Jesus is with us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and we know that we are never alone. God is with us, helping and empowering us to live a flourishing life that radiates the goodness of God. Not only during difficult times like we find ourselves in right now, but in everyday living, we need to be constantly aware of our divine help. As our flesh fights for control and the wickedness in the world tugs at us, tempting us, that's when the Spirit steps in and helps us to be who God created us to be. When we are being the wonderful creations of God, the creations God created us to be, we are strengthened and empowered to do God's will. The Holy Spirit not only helps us by empowering us, the Spirit helps us to be at peace. Ephesians 2.14 says, for Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the walls of hostility that separated us. Peace on earth started with the birth of Jesus Christ. God in human flesh born right into our hostile world. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, which means the state of harmony that is available to believers through having a right relationship with God and others, and is especially associated with the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
We are able to be at peace because Jesus sees our stress and understands it because he also lived with stress. He was born right in the middle of it. Jesus, through the indwelling Holy Spirit, is right there in the middle of our chaotic lives. He is in the middle of all of our struggles, medical diagnosis, health struggles, relationship and marriage struggles, financial hardship, depression, anxiety, grieving our loved ones. Jesus knows the constant aches in our hearts and abhorrence of prejudice based on race, class, gender or occupation is fundamental in Jesus's gospel. His gospel is clear that human beings have freedom, freedom which includes the choice to reject God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Choosing Christ means choosing life because his life was the light of all humankind. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means we are filled with the light of Christ, which must not be hid. These present day struggles may make it difficult to see your bright light as worthwhile but it does stand out, it does shine, and it gives others something to aspire to. Being a Christian means to be in constant battle for good to triumph over evil. Jesus came to earth with a mission. He came to die for us and to give us the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation and the presence of the Holy Spirit living inside every person who believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When Christ ascended to heaven after his death and resurrection, he left us with the gift of peace, peace that surpasses all understanding, peace that doesn't make sense when looking at our circumstances. The Holy Spirit helps us to trust in God and to abide in Christ even when the battle is waging war all around us. This sense of peace should in no way lull us into a sense of complacency because just as Jesus came with a mission, he left us with a mission. In Acts 1.8, Jesus told his disciples, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Instead of the headlines reading COVID-19 spreads among the masses, the headlines should read the good news of Jesus Christ goes viral. Is it possible for the news about the saving grace of Jesus Christ to touch as many new lives as the coronavirus has? People are eagerly watching the news broadcast for updates on this virus and other atrocities. But shouldn't we be eagerly watching and listening for a divine word that will help us get through these difficult days? The words of encouragement, prayers, regular Bible study, and Sunday sermons on social media for the masses to connect with are awesome. So are the watch parties that allow us to worship together, pray together, even praise together. The World Wide Web is a magnificent creation to connect with the masses. Yet, there are so many more opportunities to share the good news of Jesus Christ to all the regions of the world, and we must be intentional about doing so. Being intentional means to be determined to make something happen. You have a goal to achieve. You have a plan and objective. It is good to post on social media, but don't stop sharing the good news there. Make daily calls to family, friends, church members, co-workers, neighbors, anyone to whom you can offer a word of encouragement or even pray with. Remember to share an uplifting word, thought or deed with others as you move about. People are hurting, worried, stressed, fearful, uptight, angry, depressed, lonesome, and experiencing a myriad of emotional disorders unfamiliar to them. So now is the time to be the church. Now is the time to be the church. Now is the time to spread the good news about Jesus Christ. Reach out and touch someone with the love of Christ. And I pray that the power 
and peace of God will be with you.